Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, this first story has been doing the rounds recently. I'm going to throw the warning out. If you're eating, you may want to skip this one just in case you do. You'll get it from the title. I thought it was a pretty interesting one. It's from Inner Cupcake 6809 and says, Caught the plasterer doing work on my kitchen, peeing into his plaster mix that he was about to put on the walls. I want everything he has already plastered, removed and done again by someone else. Am I overreacting? The first post from OP said, having a new kitchen fitted, how long realistically can I expect it to take? Which said, no one has given me a clear answer. Initially, I was told three days, rip out and install new, all pre-made. Now I'm being told the rip out is today, an electrician is going to come at some point. We don't know when, but today slash tomorrow. Then when he's done, the plaster is going to come. Again, not confirmed time. And it's unlikely the new cabinets will be going in before Monday next week. Is this normal? or am I being taken for a ride? Price is all set out. Nothing on the quote about additional labor if it takes longer. But is that the game? Or did the initial person just severely underestimate the time needed? And the general consensus below that post was saying, yeah, that's a normal time frame for a kitchen redone kind of thing. And what they initially told you of three days is way too short. But OP came in with another post that said how to deal with a miserable construction worker. What the fuck am I supposed to do about it? <laughs> I'm currently having work done on my kitchen. It has gone okay so far until yesterday afternoon when Mr. Plasterer has showed up. He has done nothing but complain about everything and mutter under his breath. Apparently, the tea I have in, Yorkshire tea, he doesn't like. He doesn't like my dogs being in the house. They are confined to the living room or outside. He doesn't have to see them and they have been very quiet. To be honest, they are a little stressed having so many people in the house, so they are being very clingy anyway. He's annoyed that I have things in the kitchen, such as a washing machine, a dryer, and a fridge freezer. I have nowhere else to put them, and this was explained to them. No one else has had an issue with it. He's muttering constantly under his breath, but loud enough that I can hear. Like he's doing his mix now, and every minute or two, I can just hear him swearing under his breath about everything. I don't know if he's just having a bad day, but it's irritating and constant. If I complain to his manager, he's just going to get more passive aggressive and I can't handle it. I mean, I say it's been fine, but it's not. The communication of the company who is doing it is so ridiculously poor. No one can tell me anything ever. They were supposed to let us know before they come. They told us on Friday they'd be here Tuesday and then came on Monday for start. I just want him to stop complaining, get on with his job and get the fuck out of my house to be honest. But every other second there's a different groan about how he doesn't want to be here, can't do it or whatever he's found to complain about in that moment. I'm so fed up. Commenter said below, fire him. <laughs> Opie said, I wish I could. He's part of a larger contract team, but I've spoken to his manager and asked if he has someone else who can finish the work. OP went to another subreddit asking tips for cleaning plaster and dust stains and remnants and said, I'm having my kitchen done at the moment. I have a not so great plasterer it seems. He's part of a larger team. He's just gone on a break and I've walked past my kitchen to see an absolute bomb site. Now I know it's a process and it's going to be worse before it gets better. There is no way there is not going to be plaster dust and stains and bits left over on the appliances. I also don't know what state he's going to leave it in over the weekend, and it still needs to be used. So firstly, how do I go about getting rid of all the plaster dust in my house? I'm hoovering constantly, but don't seem to make a dent in it, and it's everywhere. Secondly, what's the best way to get rid of the white plaster stains that are left after I mop or wipe up? No matter how many times I go over it, they come back once dry. Use flash spray, vinegar, and bicarbonate, and just washing up liquid as a last ditch effort. Thirdly, hard clumps of plaster. If there is any left, what do I do? Soak with warm water? Chip off? In reality, I may just be panicking for no reason, but it would be nice to know in advance so I can get anything I may need and make a preemptive strike. OP came in with a post on the Am I Overreacting subreddit and says, Am I overreacting? Caught the plasterer doing work on my kitchen, peeing into his plaster mix that he was about to put on the walls. I want everything he's already plastered, removed and done again by someone else. Am I overreacting? Okay, 
I'll try to keep this short as I possibly can. I've been having work done on my kitchen. It is through a larger company. Do I tell what I want? They tell me how much it will cost and deal with everything else. Everything has been fine, apart from lack of communication on their part. This was until the plasterer showed up on Thursday. I've complained elsewhere on Reddit about him looking for advice. He just didn't want to do the job. He's not stopped muttering under his breath and complaining since he started, and he is really, really dragging his feet. It got so bad on Friday, I contacted the site manager, explained that I couldn't listen to him complain anymore, and the speed of work was simply not where it needed to be. The site manager assured me he would be moved to a different job. Well, lo and behold, he wasn't. I was out of the house when he came today, and the other guys on site let him in and then left to go get some things they needed. Not too happy about this at all. I come home. He stood in my kitchen over his bucket of plaster and he's just pissing into it like a racehorse. I screamed at him, what are you doing? He zipped up, looked shocked and shouted, it's not what it looks like. What the fuck else does it look like? I told him to get out, which he did without argument. I rang his site manager again. He obviously didn't believe me. Why would you believe me? Why would anyone do that? But I think the fact that I was in hysterics has made him believe at least something has happened. The thing is, this guy has had a few periods of time where he has been on his own, so I don't know if this is the first time he was peeing in the bucket, or if all the plaster that is already on my walls is mixed with his urine. So I have asked them to remove all the plaster and start again, or I am ending the contract with them and I will find someone else. They said that it would cost me extra. Am I mad here? Am I overreacting? I mean, I don't think I can prove that he has done this, but I don't want to take the chance. I think I'm in shock. Like, who the fuck does this? Mini update, the bucket with the plaster and urine mix has kindly been moved to the shed by my lovely partner. I've contacted the non-emergency number for the police. They were very confused to what the problem was, but eventually they understood. They said that there is nothing they can do at this point because who knows what would have happened. However, they have given me a log number and asked if I can update them if the company admits anything. She did say I may be able to do more if I go to the station and speak to someone direct. As for the company, I just got off the phone with the owner. He's trying to convince me to keep the plaster that is up. That he was just caught short and was going to throw the mix away etc. I told him I don't care. Now every time I think of my kitchen, I think of this guy urinating in the middle of it. I told him he needs to make this right or I'm taking it so far it won't matter anymore. He's going to tell me how they're going to fix it in the morning. Tin as I'm not going in the kitchen, we're having a chippy tea. <laughs> chippy tea and then I'm going to bed. I've had way too much excitement today and honestly, I think I'm a bit traumatized. OP asked the question, I mean, why the fuck would you do that? Why would you do that? I'm not sure why, but I googled if it was a trick of the trade or something like that, but obviously it's not. And it wouldn't matter if it was, you don't pee in your plaster. And this is definitely not the first time he's done this, is it? Is he just marking other people's houses like a like an animal or something? Like the sticky bandits in Home Alone, leaving their mark on the property. I poop in a bag, great name, says classic. If real, classic. If fake, classic. Either way, that dude pissed in your plaster. <laughs> Opie says real. My house is now covered in piss plaster and dust, and I'm just living in a pissy nightmare. One day, I know this will just be a funny tale I tell future kids, and I'm using that saying from now on. Who pissed in your plaster? It's just too real right now. Oh, I'm going to have to use that one more often. Moist Seeded Loaf says, There's an episode of IT Crowd where this exact thing happens though he pisses on the walls, not mixed in with plaster. And I assume you didn't call the guy a big, ugly builder. OP says, I didn't. I was very polite. I first met him on Thursday, and within five minutes, he was complaining that he didn't like my choice of tea bags, Yorkshire tea. They're a staple. And that my coffee was shite. Kenko, one of the site lads had to take him outside at one point on Friday because he was complaining so loud and banging about. That's when I complained about him and asked if his manager could replace him which he was supposed to do, but didn't, and now I have pissy walls. Catman says, general curiosity question, are they allowed to use your bathroom? In no way defending his actions here, but as someone who has been in construction before, many homeowners would straight up refuse to let the hired help use their washroom, so many of you may be surprised to find out pissing in a bucket is actually fairly common. 
I would say you aren't overreacting necessarily, but also it could legit be a giant misunderstanding. There really isn't any proof they'd be using that bucket for the next plaster mix or that he was intending to wash out the bucket afterwards. Opie says, they were more than welcome to use both the downstairs toilet and upstairs bathroom. I'm very working class. Not that that makes a difference, but I would never ever expect anyone doing their job to be treated anything less than a human being. I bought them refreshments and snacks, welcomed them into my home, tried to make their experience as pleasant as possible, and they repaid me with peeing in my kitchen and possibly pasting it on my walls. In another subreddit, Casual UK, on the Thursday's complaints thread, OP said, Today is my last day in work before I'm being put on temporary leave because my employer can't afford to pay me. Allegedly, it's only for a month, but I don't think I will have a job to come back to. My clothes are damp because my dryer is being a dickhead. <laughs> Earlier this week, I caught the plasterer doing my kitchen, pissing in the plaster mix in my kitchen. The plaster which may have been put on my walls. So I've had to deal with the outcome of that for most of the week. It's a whole thing. I made a post about it. Plus the plasterer was a bit of an ass before that too. And I'm really cold. Someone responded to OP in that thread and said, you're the person whose plasterer pissed in their plaster. I feel like I'm meeting a celebrity. To which... OP responded saying, "'Tis I, the lady with the pissy walls. You can be one of the first to know. Reddit helped me make it right. I told the owner I'd posted about it and the post was getting a lot of engagement. What would happen if I posted the name of the company? He sent round an environmental hazard cleaner the next day. Lovely guy, usually does crime scene cleanups and chemical stuff, so was incredibly professional. My house has never been skewness? We're now in a discussion of how we can make the rest of it right. Someone posted a link that it, this was cross-posted to the plasterer subreddit and there was people saying, nah, this is absolutely normal. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? And when she approached the company about it and said, oh no, it's going to cost you extra to remove that, you'd have thought the company would just be backtracking all the way saying, oh no, we'll send someone out immediately to rectify this rather than doubling down and trying to charge you to remove the pissy plaster. There were some people saying they'd just be able to ignore it. Other people saying that they take it as far as they could go, but they just need that plaster replaced. How about you? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. This one's from a Simon Cold 8106 that says neighbor loves Halloween from the entitled people and spells subreddit. Just thought I'd share a weird ass encounter I had this weekend. My 22 male grandpa's neighbor is probably in her late 30s. I'm staying with him for a while because of a roommate situation. His property is a few acres and the neighbor's lot is similar. They're separated by trees. My grandpa has a dog, an old German shepherd. He's gotten sensitive to noises lately. Here's the problem. Neighbor is a Halloween fanatic. My grandpa said she gets a Halloween decor up in late August, but the issue isn't the decor is that she's got this odd soundscape. The soundscape includes a firework slash gunshot type cluster of bangs that happens every so often. Given the distance between the homes, we shouldn't be able to hear any of it. Anyway, she runs it from 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. They don't get trick or treaters or anything in this area. Houses are too far apart slash have long private drives. So all of this is for herself. My grandpa is too nice slash conflict avoidant to do anything about it. I feel so bad for the dog. After a day of the sounds triggering the dog, I went over and I introduced myself. It was my first time meeting her, so I didn't want to immediately launch into my complaint. I went along with some conversation to build rapport. She was extremely chatty at first, asked a lot of questions about me, tried to guess my ethnicity. I have a racially ambiguous face and she wanted to prove that she could read my features or whatever. From there, she started telling me which celebrities I remind her of haven't heard of any of them and then she started talking about horror movies i couldn't get a word in i had to interrupt her i explained about our dog started with maybe you could consider using a different soundscape or turning it down as soon as i brought this topic up she got all cold her whole demeanor towards me changed but she did agree she would turn it down she didn't so i turned up to her door for the second time yesterday this is when it got weird she answered the door in full costume and was putting on a character that she didn't feel necessary to drop while talking to me. I tried to let her know that I'm going to be making a noise complaint if she doesn't adjust her soundscape. I asked her how come she didn't turn it down. 
She ignored this by telling me I look like I have a delicious liver. <laughs> what? It's hard to express how frustrating it was. I said nothing. I just stared at her, irritated, hoping she'd drop the act. Instead of getting serious, she kept the weird voice going and told me, lower your eyebrow. Why are you so grumpy? She also tried to reach out slowly to touch my face or something. I just turned around and left. This woman was still in her fucking character. She said something after me, but I was not able to make it out enough to quote it here. I got home and made a noise complaint. Cops took my statement and they went over and talked with her. No more soundscape. Peace and quiet. Today, she left a dead bird on the doorstep. Mama Magpie says to OP, Do you have proof, like a ring camera recording, because it could just be a coincidence? OP says, It's not a ring, but my grandpa has an old porch camera. It was her. I could tell from the Halloween wig. Lol. I'm just hoping the bird was already dead when she found it, and not murdered. Straight Extremes is out of interest. What was her character? Opie says, so unfortunately, I didn't ask. I didn't want to acknowledge it. I think it was just some kind of witch or demon costume. Long white hair, long nails, red lipstick, face paint. She had on a robe with a hood that was covering most of it though. Brief History says, okay, this woman sounds deranged, psychotic, dangerous, and exactly my type. Is she single? <laughs> Sorry about the dog, but if you set me up with her, I will totally change the soundscape and lower the volume. I love dogs and wouldn't be able to enjoy the spooky sounds knowing they are making a nearby dog panic. Opie says her lack of concern for dogs, maybe animals in general, is a deal breaker for most, but I'm glad you're not like that. She's all yours, man. Brief History replied saying it will be a deal breaker, but I can change her. I hope. So Opie went over to the Spells subreddit and said, do these ingredients mean anything? And says, hi, I just found this sub and thought I'd ask here. Someone put red wax with thread in it, hair and what I think was honey with cinnamon under the door handle of my vehicle. I touched it and I got it all over my hand. Do these things mean anything? Logical Ha says, you don't have to touch it to be affected. It's supposed to be placed somewhere they frequent. I'd say you got spell roofied friend. There's several ways to get rid of this. Do your research on local weeds for your cleansing bath. That way it costs you nothing. Or play along. Who knows where it'll go? Opie says, I'm just going to ignore it. I feel like anything else will just work against me. Another commenter says, those items are mostly used in love spells. However, usage wouldn't be where the target would see it or touch it. So either whoever did it is new to the craft and didn't know what they were doing, or it's not magical at all and someone is being a jerk. OP updated their post. This is the update. She doesn't play the soundscape anymore, but she stuck some weird ingredients to the door handle of my vehicle. I touched the stuff and it got all over my hand. I had a feeling it was something witchy, so I asked on Reddit and learned it is love spell ingredients. Assuming that was for me, but not completely discounting my grandpa. Lol. A few days after she left me the bird, she turned the soundscape on just as I was going past her house during my run. From the way she timed it slash turned it off when I had reached my grandpa's house, it was deliberate. I found it amusing because it was kind of clever. She wrote a note to me in my grandpa's native language which is Korean. It's basically a copy of the phrase. If you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. The dog is safe and nothing has happened to him. I already have mentioned this, but there is a police report slash case number assigned to this incident. And I taught my grandpa what number to call so he can continue reporting other events if they happen to add to the paper trail. He has working security cameras on his front and back porch and they're fairly decent. This is not my permanent residence, but I'm sure he will be fine. Brief history replied to that and he was the guy that was interested in this person and quoted OP saying, I asked on Reddit and learned it is love spell ingredients. Assuming that was for me, but not completely discounting my grandpa. I replied to OP saying, my offer from the last post is still on the table, just for your information. Brief then came in again and quoted OP saying, she wrote a note to me in my grandpa's native language, which is Korean. It's basically a copy of the phrase, if you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. Reef then says, okay, this is creepy as fuck. A dead bird I can handle. Creepy Korean notes with cringe Nietzsche quotes. Who's a German philosopher. Pants shittingly terrifying. The offer's off the table. Sorry. Hopi did respond saying, you're the guy who wants to date my neighbor, right? Reef replied saying, lol. I was until I read part about the note she left in Korean. I'm out. And for your information, 
That's a Nietzsche quote, and if I were you, I'd get a protective order ASAP. Another commenter, MJH, says, This is weird. I'm a practicing witch. I always loved Halloween. Some of my decorations stay up all year. Some is my house decor, but I don't bother my neighbors. Don't worry about the love spell. Most don't work, and a lot of people don't do them because it takes away free will. I thought I was the weird neighbor, but she takes the cake. Glad she's not playing those noises anymore and scaring the dog. Opie says, as long as the dog is off the table, I'm happy. Good luck to a love spell. I don't think it'd be enough. I'll keep an eye on my grandpa. If he gets a new haircut, I'll know who the real target was. That brief history dude was cracking me up though. At the first part, he's like, yeah, get me involved with that. Like all the other stuff that was going on, like the dead bird, he's like, I can change her. And then as soon as it came up with this note with a quote from Nietzsche, is it? He's like, nah, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> I gotta research why. There's gotta be a reason why this particular quote set him off. OP came in with another update and said a few people reached out to see if anything happened on Halloween. I was going to wait on an update until there was a conclusion, but I'm not sure when that might be. To avoid spamming, I won't be making any other updates until this matter is resolved. To answer the question I got the most, I wasn't at my grandpa's place on Halloween or the following day, but he told me he saw my neighbor in the woods by his property line. She was wearing a costume, looking something like the girl from the ring. Oh God. He said he noticed her standing there facing the house in the middle of the day on Halloween. But other than that, nothing happened. I was here on Saturday and that's when she threw a party. It was raining but you could hear the bass from her music and there were cars in her driveway. Around 10pm the doorbell rang and when I answered it was her, looking just like my grandpa had described. Same costume. I couldn't see her face that well through all the hair but I recognized her voice. She seemed panicked and was speaking so fast I couldn't make out everything she was saying but the gist of it was that she needed help and wanted me to call an ambulance. Before I could process what was happening or even say anything, she hugged me. It wasn't really a normal hug but I don't know how else to describe it. Currently, I have an arm sling for an injury so when she slammed into me, the arm got sandwiched between us and the sudden pain made me tense up and freeze. I genuinely thought she was in distress and believed her because it seemed different than the time she was acting like some character. I think I said something like, it's okay, I'll help you, in an attempt to reassure her. And with my free hand, I tried to push her head away. She was clinging to me so hard, I didn't know what to do. She was making these weird hiccuping sounds and was covered in something that smelled like diesel. The party was still going, so I just assumed it had something to do with that. Maybe she was intoxicated or under the influence of something. I told her I needed to get my phone so I could make the call. I asked her some questions, but she didn't answer. She eventually calmed down and let me go. She stood by the door, all quiet. I wanted to get my phone first anyway, but by the time I returned, she was gone. I checked the camera and it showed she walked off the porch. The police took 15 minutes to arrive that night. I explained what happened and showed them the porch camera footage. They went to her house for a wellness check and an ambulance showed up too. They told me to stay at my house so I didn't go with them. Today, she came by looking normal. She asked why I called the cops on her party and completely denied it was her at my door the other night. I didn't bother with the conversation after that. I just shut the door in her face. Since my last update, she has found my Reddit account, so I won't disclose any next steps. I thought about not doing any more updates altogether, but I felt bad about leaving people hanging. That neighbor sounds unhinged and I would be putting extra cameras up, extra precaution at your grandpa's house. I don't know if it's too far to say, maybe informing the police of what's going on just so they can log it. I would certainly be creating some sort of trail about it or logging everything that's happening because it's very, very disturbing at this point. But what about you guys? What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for being here today, getting involved in the stories, your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love. I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Let's go.